All right, welcome. I'm going to be reading uh, from the first book in my Supernormal Legacy, and uh, the story is about a reluctant superhero who is, after seven years, when she's 14, she's pulled back into the world where she has to be a superhero and use her powers. So this story, um, the scene that I'm going to read from, takes place after she's reconnected with her cousins, had a couple of incidents with them, and now she's sort of, she's behind on her abilities, so she's trying to catch up. So that's where this takes place. So it's kind of the first, part of the first third of the book. And the story is set in Portland, so the first scene, the scene that I'm reading from, takes place on the Steel Bridge in Portland. So if you know that bridge, picture it in your mind right now. All right. To my astonishment, my cousins crossed the traffic lanes to stand at the base of the eastern tower of the steel bridge. Zoe began climbing the girder, obviously intending to crawl up to the very top. No one else was surprised. In fact, they all followed without question. Kevin glanced at me before beginning his ascent. Come on. Really? We're going to climb the bridge? The steel tower seemed to rise up into the darkness. I tried not to show my apprehension. Kevin looked up the length of the steel beams. Well, yeah, what did you think we were going to do? Just stand around and look around? I didn't have a good answer. Instead, I waved him on and prepared to follow while trying to ignore the pounding of my heart. I gripped the metal, cold and slick, under my hands. With a deep breath, I pulled my body up the side of the tower. I climbed without looking back, each step, each pull of my arms giving me confidence when I didn't fall to the ground. I reached the top sooner than I expected and took a gulping breath. My cousins waited for me on the platform, some sitting, some standing. Lining the rim were four railed ledges creating a square. No one else seemed to notice the constant chilling wind trying to push us from our perch. I barely had time to, re to attempt to relax before Emma stood up, smirking at me. I felt my eyebrows pull together as I frowned at her, thinking, now what? Ready? she asked, looking at the rest of the cousins. Kevin grinned. Oh yes, let's go into circuit acrobat mode. He bounced on the heat balls of his feet with excitement. His words clued me into Emma's plan, and I turned my gaze to the cable stretching between the towers, feeling my stomach sink. The cable swayed in the wind, and though I knew that steel was strong enough to lift the weight of the bridge, they looked insubstantial in the mist. I clenched my teeth and forced myself not to shiver. Supernormal or not, I wasn't sure I could manage the delicate balance necessary to walk from tower to tower via the cables. I met Emma's challenging look. I wasn't about to let her know I was afraid, so I shrugged. After you. She raised an eyebrow. I was pretty sure she knew I was scared, but she'd always been good, she'd always been good at detecting my emotions when we were kids good enough to use it against me a few times. Now she didn't say anything as she turned and stepped onto one of the cables, easily adjusting her balance to the rhythm of the sway. She'd only gone a few steps before Kevin joined her. I held my breath as his weight changed the movement of the cable. Naturally, both of them kept their balance perfectly. One by one, the rest of the cousins followed. Lang chose the same cable as Emma and Kevin, but Zoe and Hugh each chose their own cable. I gripped the railing and told myself to go for it, but I couldn't seem to make my legs move. Come on, Olivia. Hugh stood on one foot on his cable. He held out his hand. Want some help? No. Accepting help would certainly make me look weak. I shook my head. Go on, I'm coming. Walking on an unoccupied cable seemed like the most stable option, so I chose one on the outmost edge. Before I could take the first step, Kevin whooped and did a backflip. Emma and Lang just laughed as the cable rocked between their feet. Kevin's moves inspired the rest to daring feats. Zoe zigzagged from cable to cable while Lang bent down into a handstand. Ugh, now I really couldn't chicken out. The least I could do was a walk on the stupid cable. At that moment, Emma turned around. What's wrong, Olivia? Scared? I glared at her as I took the first step forward. My stomach swooped uncomfortably as the cable undulated between my feet, but I forced myself to take the next step, and the next. I kept my eyes forward, afraid to look down at the bridge and the water below me. 
Ollie, just relax, you'll be fine, Kevin called out. Just relax, was he crazy? I was on a cable the size of my thigh, a hundred, couple of hundred feet above the river, with the wind buffeting me. Only sheer willpower was keeping me steady. I made the mistake of glancing down and felt my head go light with dizziness. Hastily, I looked back up, but, my, but I felt my body wobbling and I clenched in panic. The cable rippled under my feet and I felt someone grip my arms from behind me. Ket Ling said, Ollie, you're going to be okay, take a breath. I breathed out, surprised to discover I'd been holding my breath. Good, Ling continued, now close your eyes. I didn't want to speak, afraid my voice would be too shaky, so I didn't argue this, with this insane request. He must have sensed my reluctance because he said, seriously, it'll help, just close your eyes. I took a shuddering breath and closed my eyes. Lang kept his arms wrapped around me, his hands wrapped around my arms. I waited for something to happen, not sure what to expect. After a minute, I said, so? I stopped because something was happening. The orientation of my body kept writing itself with the sway of the cable as if there was a gyroscope in my head. I no longer felt unsteady. Instead, my body relaxed into the movement, adjusting and readjusting as necessary. I'll stop there. Thank you.